I have just returned home from London, well, a day or two before, and I was asked about the first class trip from London to New York, because that wasn't affected by all of the blizzards. So this will be a kind of a, I don't know, summary video. I'm not covering all the videos I took and all the details. This is just sort of the basics. Again, I'm a placeholder, if you will. Um, I will disclose the total cost ahead of time, because sometimes people just want to know the total cost. The total cost was... Um, six hundred and thirty dollars and seventy thousand miles. So you cannot get around the six hundred and thirty dollar charge, and that was to go to you know from New York. If I had flown all the way to Seattle, well, that wasn't even an option. But anyway, so that's the price you have to pay. Seventy thousand miles means different things to different people. You can get fifty thousand miles just for getting a new credit card. So and if you spend a lot of money, that if you were to buy those miles as outright, it would be about eh, on average two hundred fifty dollars for ten thousand. So you know you do the math, and that's uh, yeah, you're getting close to two thousand. So twenty five hundred. Yeah, that's if you bought the miles from scratch, and I did not. However, um, yeah, so I had the miles, I used the miles, and the one thing about it is, if you do it this way, you don't gain any miles or from the trip. You, this is all spending. You get to indulge, but the miles are gone, so there's no, you know, flying bonus or EQM or none of that. None of that exists. Uh, it's just fun to do once in a while. I don't do it all the time, but every once in a while, I like to do it. And there are some benefits that uh, or reasons, not just the seat, but other reasons why I like doing such a thing. Um, yeah, so I'll go over them here, but I've covered, you know, how much something like this costs. I should say outright, if you were to buy this ticket, on average, $10,000. Sometimes you can see it like $7,500. I've, I've seen it up to $15,000. So, Maybe there are people in the world that actually pay cash for some a ticket like this. I never have and probably never will unless Bitcoin goes crazy again. I don't know. I don't think that's going to happen, but let me cover the details. So really, this starts at Terminal 5. That's where you'll find uh, British Airways main terminal and main gates. This is uh, the Bakerloo line. No, Bakerloo. This is the Elizabeth line. I believe it's brand new and lets you off right here. And it's really, you just go up a few flights of stairs and you are at the gates. Now, as soon as you get out there, you'll notice there are a lot of people. This was, what, the December 23rd, I believe? No, 22nd. So there are a lot of people in the airport, but it gets much worse than this. Um, you can look down and see, that's not really the worst of days, actually. So one thing to keep in mind, this is the business class line. So there's a lot of people even in this line. And I would say the wait's probably going to be 20 minutes there, maybe 30 minutes. Could be longer, depending on how many workers are there. But they tell you go all the way down if you ask for directions and reach the J, so J section. And then you'll find a first class area. So these are just for first class passengers only. Well, how many can there possibly be? Yeah, it turns out there's actually quite a lot of them. What are that? 13? I don't know if they're all staffed. I think they might be. Yeah, 13 of them. Can you believe there's that many people flying first class on a daily basis? Once you have your boarding pass, which I had to go to the gate to get, you can actually come through here and you'll go to a private security area. So this is a security area for only British Airways passengers flying in first class. Just kind of crazy. And there's like two entrances there, two conveyor belts. It's just wild. You can put your stuff that you can't bring on the plane, like really large scissors. Yeah, put them in there. Yeah, Lighters, put them in there. Perfume. Can't have no perfume. Put them in there. All the forbidden items. But it works just like any other scanner. Then you go through, you get scanned, x-rayed. Um, yeah, your typical scanner. And then next thing you know, you're on these corridors. Hey, Christmas. Uh, and then you're pretty much out in a lounge, which is really cool. I, uh, you go past the first lounge, which is odd because everyone in first class can go, I believe, to the Concord Lounge, but they have another lounge out there. Anyway, I guess it's just for business class. And I found a seat in a nice open area. Got some daylight, I guess. Uh, you look out and you see planes. It's not the not the best view because you're not watching the planes actually take off. They're just doing a little taxing in this area. But eh. picked up some gin and seltzer, I believe, and some little cakes. Why not? And then I went around the area and took some photos and just kind of seeing. This is the Concord Lounge. It's pretty much as good as it gets. Nice little bar and nice views of the outer area. I like that it's not totally sealed off. They have a nose cone of one of the original Concords. A little bit of history about it. And uh, yeah, I got an old menu. So you get a menu and they'll come by and take your order. It's really like being at a restaurant. I ordered, uh, I don't know, some fancy burger and fries. And that was pretty good. At least it wasn't too big because I did not want to fill up before the flight. Again, nice area. Cozy. Good views. Uh, yeah, if you can find the seats, some of these seats have nice fireplaces, but uh, most of them are taken, obviously. And different chairs. Uh, my, again, 
really cool bar. I got some wine to go with the seltzer. Hey, they pair well, right? Um, and then there's, of course, little uh, signs to tell you when your flight's taken off so you don't miss it by enjoying the lounge too much. So overall, yeah, a nice little area. And the nice thing about the, I use nice a lot. Uh, the cool thing about lounges is you can like leave your luggage out and like, your laptops. I usually don't leave my laptop out in the open, but my bags I do. It's just a pretty safe place because someone would have to come into the airport and then come into a get lounge actions access come into a lounge and most people aren't there to steal stuff so there's a high level of security in a lounge probably even cameras a really cool uh like a seeing eye dog i saw very friendly um they said it was okay to pet it so i petted it uh, just neat seeing something like that yeah very friendly people ah next thing you know i'm headed over to the gates and i had to get onto the plane and that's where you're back in gen pop, I like to call it. And I saw my plane, thought, all right, cool. It that doesn't look too big, but you realize the windows are pretty small there. So that is a big plane. Um, and then, yeah, really nice seats, big seats. Um, and it's even hard to get a photo of uh, the whole seat. I uh, have to use like the wide angle, uh, plenty of leg room, uh, nice situated. Christmas, they mentioned Christmas. And then you got the, the menu. The controller, um, they each seem to have, I don't know, all these aircrafts have different ways of controlling the seats, though so they have their own. This one, you not too complicated, twist one way, twist the other way. But sometimes the other buttons, you don't know what light is uh, working. You know, it just it just takes trial and error. It's not the worst thing, but it's just kind of funny how you have to keep learning the rules every time. Uh, yeah, again, lots of room. This is a little table next to you, which is cool because it has a decent amount of space, but it, all it mainly does is contain the menu tray. So a little table area, but not too much. Um, double windows, which are really cool, um, except you really can't control them. They're automated. And um, they were so far away from my chair that it was kind of useless to me. So it depends on what seat you get. You kind of have to do some research and pick a seat near the double windows. Um, above looks the same. You get your own little coat rack and a little cubby area. Now, a hot nap, a hot towel, of course. And I got some water instead of champagne. I wanted to save room for wine. Um, and the amenity kit, very nice. One of the best. Actually, I probably think this is the best I've had. Just had a lot of useful things in them. Some waste, of course. The whole thing in general is kind of wasteful, but it's nice. It's wasteful, but it's definitely nice. Yeah, it has a lot of things in it. Uh, I was just, I mean, the comb, come on. But uh, the other thing is a full-size toothbrush and uh, a little toothpaste. That, that would come in handy. Uh, yeah, so I kept a lot of things. The bag itself, I threw away. I'm just no use for it. The screen isn't a bad size. Uh, I, I like the screen. Yeah, it worked. And yeah, just a lot of room. I mean, my feet will not even go anywhere near the end over there. So I still have another foot and a half to spare. Socks, they give you socks. Cool. Um, no USB, you have to like use your adapter, which was a little bit of annoying, but eh, that was fine. Actually, there might've been one on the side. It was just, that wasn't well done. Definitely not USB-C. Um, yeah, a lot of decent sections of wine, full bar, uh, a lot of room. And they start off, I had a Highland Sling there and some uh, amuse-bouche or something. I don't know what, uh, what those things were, but they were tasty. And uh, yeah, really good. I'm kind of getting set up to watch a little bit of videos. I usually don't do use that too much because they don't usually have the selection that I really want. Uh, the controller is pretty nice, though. Pretty standard. The, oh, yeah, I should mention the table. Plenty of room on the table. That slides into you if you want or out. So a lot of room for dining, which you'll need it. Headphones are really good. I've never heard of Meridian, but they um, they worked well. I think there were noise canceling, but they did a good job of filtering out the outside noise. I used them a little just to try out the system. Um, and then they come and set your table for you, little salt and pepper shakers or, or grinders. Those are pretty cool. Um, the bread was okay. Nothing special. Um, yeah. I like to have at least uh, an oil to dip it in. A little salad. Uh, I like the salad. It was pretty tasty. I actually, that wasn't even a salad. That was an artichoke uh, dish. A little baked artichoke type thing. Really good. The braised rib wasn't as good. Uh, I don't know. And I don't have much hunger on flights. It's just a weird phenomenon. It's just, I don't have a lot of hunger on flights, so... I, it's hard for me to really tell how good the food is, but that was just so full of fat that, uh, I don't know, it wasn't my favorite thing. Asparagus, uh, broccoli was good, vegetables here, too bad I didn't get a better picture. And yeah, next thing, I mean, we didn't get a, uh, any more footage, or I got a few videos, but next thing I knew, I was waking up and we're practically in Newark. So I did you know, move it into a bed and light out, and I was trying to watch a little bit of a movie, but next thing you know, I fall asleep, and I'm sleeping for most of the trip, so... That's the funny thing. I wake up and there's an hour left. 
I did get some coffee. I usually don't have coffee on flights, but I figured it's probably a, a decent cup of coffee. So I got the coffee. They gave me some little chocolates. I had one. I returned the other. I like, eh, I don't really need it. Um, it's funny because like the wireless age are still a bunch of wires uh, hanging in. You know, you got your charger and all that. I just thought this is funny. It's just everything's tangled up. One little rip in the seat, I noticed. Like, and these aren't for this. I don't know why, because I don't know how old this uh, plane is. But uh, yeah, I was like, eh, guys, I got to fix that. Um, yeah, the socks. And then I'm keeping the socks. Uh, they gave me pajamas too, but I didn't actually use the pajamas. I uh, I meant to. I just never actually used the pajamas. Um, yeah, the menu, I wanted to take pictures of before I left and stretch out one last time. Again, just a lot of room. Lots and lots of room. Uh, I noticed that it had uh, uh, RGB signals. I thought, really? Um, or composite, I should say. I thought these days, does anyone use that? How old is this thing? Yeah. Now I just noticed that it was funny because it was like, um, uh, oh, that's actually not too bad. Earlier it was negative ninety nine degree outside temperature was negative ninety nine, but dang, uh, now it's twenty eight degrees. So it changed quite a lot. The pillow was nicer than I made my pillow at home. Um, and there it is with some more space and my wine and yeah, the control one more time. I just want a few more photos and there we are. We've uh, reached um, Newark, uh, Liberty International Airport. Uh, yeah, good. Thing. I, and before I was left, I took, well, actually, this was a seat in front of me and I, it was notable because it was empty. It's just hard to believe that these seats even go empty sometimes. I guess they don't give these things away. If you, uh, if you don't use your miles or don't pay the cash, then I guess it's just not going to be. Or likewise, it could have been someone just flaked or didn't show up for the flight. I don't know the reason. So maybe that, that's probably more like the reason. But yeah, just crazy how, how this is it. This is pretty much as good as you can get for um, British Airways. If you are on Emirates or Singapore, or Qatar, I mean, some of them have cabins and showers and things like that. So this is by no means the best first class experience you can get on any airline. However, this is the best you can get for British Airways. So if you uh, are flying to London and want to indulge, again, 70,000 miles and $600, um, which is, it's, it's, that's a pretty good cost because it would have been 60,000 miles and $600 for business class. Um, and then again, the experience on the flight isn't the main differentiator of it. I think it's the experience before the flight, having access to the Concord Lounge, having priority special escorted boarding. You don't even have to wait in the line. Um, they kind of take you in ahead of time and put you on the flight. So that's kind of cool. Having special um, gate agents to take care of you, first class people, and having that private security. So all of those lines were lost. So that's where it's definitely worth the upgrade. Um, but other than that, I would say it, it, it's a lot of similarities to business class as well. Both turn into seats. This is just a lot more space. So anyway, that was my experience. And I'll have another video with, I'll have another episode with videos that I took later. Cheers.